enamoré de la lengua de Cervantes porque es una lengua viva, rápida y chévere. You can now learn Spanish from your home. Please contact any of the Instituto Cervantes branches in Manila, Sydney, or Kuala Lumpur. Buenas tardes. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Magandang hapon, sayon lahap. And welcome uh, to Película uh, Mabujay. This is uh, Javier Galván, the director of Instituto Cervantes de Manila, I want to welcome you and to thank you for being with us. Uh, you that follow us from your homes in different countries all over the world and that are uh, watching the movies and that are here uh, today with us for this uh, very interesting webinar on short films. Actually, a película has become in the two latest years in a meeting point for all those uh, uh, people involved in cinema production from Spain, from the Philippines, uh, also from Latin America and from uh, other countries of Southeast Asia, as Malaysia, uh, Thailand and uh, Australia in the South Pacific. So I want to thank very specially to the filmmakers that are uh, today uh, with us, three uh, of the four filmmakers that has uh, brought us uh, their creations. They are very talented. Uh, I want to also to congratulate them because uh, their production are really outstanding uh, and getting awards uh, already in their respective countries. And uh, for sure that we will see in the coming years long films uh, of big, big quality of our guests today. So thank you very much. And finally, let me thank uh, to the MC for today. Uh, he is uh, no less than Mr. Elbert Bañares. Uh, many of you, of course, know him, especially in the Philippines. Filmmaker, film producer and programmer based uh, in Manila in the Philippines. Uh, his films, designs and art have been selected in more than 60 international festivals in the five continents. Currently, uh, he's the director of festivals uh, like uh, Bakunawa Young Cinema and Sinialaga Film Festival. And I remind you that uh, you can follow us uh, either in English or in Spanish. Um, so for choosing the language, uh, you can click at the bottom, bottom of the lower, lower part of your screen. So now I thank very much to Mr. Bañares uh, for accepting our invitation and for being our MC today. And uh, Mr. Bañares, thank you so much and the floor is yours. So thank you, uh, Salamat Po, Perimakasi, Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Javier Galvan, the director of the Instituto Cervantes Manila. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone who's watching with us and joining us in four countries or wherever parts of the world. Welcome to Pelicola Spanish Film Festival. And this afternoon, we will be talking to the directors and scriptwriter of one of uh, the, the short listed films for this year's uh, Spanish Film Festival or Pelicola. Reminder to our audience, there's a simultaneous translation so the audiences can follow the discussion either in English or in Spanish. There will be two Spanish interpreters because I don't know how to speak. So I was just reprimanded this afternoon by my good friend Daisy. So just choose your preferred language by clicking the icon below. For those who are following the discussion via Zoom, you are uh, going to make your questions and please ask by clicking the Q&A icon below. For those who are watching us in Facebook, write your questions in the comment section. So we now start. 
Our first guest is a Thai filmmaker of Tichu Hainanese descent, born, brought up, and based in Bangkok. He graduated from the film department of the Chula Longkorn University. He works full-time as a script writer for a studio writing feature films and television series. He also works as a film lecturer and critic. In 2020, he was selected to participate in the Berlinale Talents Program. Please welcome the director of Anin Sri Deng, Ratchapum Bun Bun Chacho. Swadikra. Hello, uh, Ratchapum. Good afternoon. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hello, hello. hello, good afternoon to you. Um, so before I'm going to introduce the next guest, um, I have a question for you. How are you? There you go. How are you? Yeah, yeah. I just cut. Yeah. <laughs> hello. hello. Hi, hi. All right. So, you know, the film made my day. I've watched all the films four times um, the past two days. And I just want to tell everyone how much I love the uh, lineup for this year's película. I enjoyed your film in particular, and I can't help but to start with uh, this question. Um, there is so much underlying meaning behind the story in your film, of course. So tell us how you were able to infuse the Thai political landscape in your film. I'm sorry for, for starting this conversation with a political question. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, I think, because it's quite obvious in the film. Um, actually, I think the film, Thai filmmaker in my generations, we are and also like younger generation, we are quite very interested in how to talk about and discuss politics, our, our country in the film media. And um, so it's quite natural for me, actually, when making this film, that it comes to me, this political aspect of, of the country comes to my thinking when I wrote a script. Yeah, and mm -hmm. throughout the whole production. So, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um there's so much to dissect in, uh, in the film An Insuri Day, you know? um, but on behalf of those who is as curious as me, how did you come about writing the characters? Did you base them on real life characters mm. or was there a character in your film that you felt you had to make it as you? Um, actually, there's many sources of it, like, uh, but, but mainly, primarily, uh, I, I based the film, like the, the idea of the character from um, in Thailand in the 70s, uh, like there's a pow, pow fiction or yeah. <laughs> uh, of films that's kind of like Hollywood myth pop. Uh, it's called Red Eagle, which is in yes. Thai, it's in Sine. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a superhero, like a Batman, Thai Batman, yeah. So the, the, the main character, he's uh, also like a free boy millionaire who, who could not stand the the, the, the rivers of crimes in Thailand about like, mm. terrorists, drug dealing, drug trafficking, something like that. And he could not like, he could not let the police do their work. So he's, mm. he thinks like it's his own responsibility. So he somehow like um, dress up as like, a superhero at night and drive <laughs> fancy car to beat up criminals at night, something like that, like a, like a Batman boss slash um, James Bond in a way and yeah. and that's and that's somehow like a cold war hero in that's what's quite popular and it mm. the novel itself was adapted into films like many 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 versions of it and I think that it's quite interesting to to somehow like adapt this character and make it uh, modern or more contemporary so instead of like having heterosexual millionaire, I have this transgender prostitute who, who become like a hero for this, for the country. Like and, but, and why not? Yeah. yeah. yeah why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, why yeah. not? Let's, let's have those heroes. And I yeah. think there's lots of them who are, I think, around, just around playing heroes, um, real heroes to in real life uh, around us. It's just so happened that they are not, uh, most, uh, most of them are not uh, given the, uh, platform or given the voices to be heard and to be recognized. Yeah, so yeah, so the idea of like having marginal people like decenter the the, the, the decenter traditional hero and having mm. more voice from the marginal position is something that kind of like appealed to me when I made this film. Yeah. 
and what how do how would you react to the current um um trend and i hate to call it trend that right. everyone is almost uh making their characters um in in the minority there seems to be a consciousness about it with with cinema these days um, in fact even the academy awards changed yeah, yeah, yeah. their their rules for that yeah, yeah. Um, i think it's I think that's a good and bad things about that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's more like a betting, like you just put a minority of people of color in the in some roles in your film, but um, haven't really like paying attention or so mm -hmm. just cast a color blind or just like we're betting something like that. But but in my case, I think a transgender is quite um, transgender character in, in Thai media are already like very mainstream in a way. <laughs> so it's not that like it's not kind of like a, a stretch to put her there. Mm. Yeah, but it's more like how to reimagine because normally the um, transgender character would be portrayed as a, a supporting character that only doing comedic role in the in the drama of film. So for me, it's just like try to reimagine because it's one, one of the things that I like about and I try to pursue is that why when you have like an LGBT character and it needs to be in the romantic film, Right. or activist film i yes. because I'm, I'm interested in like quality of film and 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 why could we have like a critical thriller film with uh queer characters in the in the main world without having to be about the identity politics like it's this is not a film about like okay promote gay right or mm -hmm. lgbt issue solely it could be talk about something else but with with the we have characters like doing the main thing. Yeah. But why do you think so? Why do you think they do that? Mm. I think I think I'm not sure this is like the how to properly respond to that question, but I think like I feel like it would be freer if they could do that without having mm. to like without having to have justification for that. Like <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm doing this and I don't need to, you know, like, I don't need to, like, oh, um, I don't know, like, you know, like, because, like, because, uh, because there's a the, lot of films, I, I do get you, there's a lot of films that they need to, the feel to justify something, yeah, because yeah, they, because choice. the defense comes ahead instead of the, uh, the proposition or the, or the story. So I'm glad that you're just doing this without any sort of explanation. We yeah. exist because we want to. Yeah, just basically what you want to. Why you have to have this fun? Like, why, why only the straight people having fun? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have, I have other questions, but I'm going yeah, to yeah. ask you in a while because uh, we we have other guests and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before that, I just want to say that um, I I'm sure you had fun in making the film, right? Yeah, because it was it was a fun film. You were I'm sure you were laughing behind the scenes while while doing this. Uh, or, or did, did you enjoy doing the film? Of course. I, um, honestly, it was quite tiring as well, but every <laughs> filmmaking is tiring. Of course, <laughs> but it is I tiring. enjoy making it, enjoy writing it, enjoy editing it. Yeah. Yeah. So enjoy watching actors performing. Yeah. Yes. Did, did you shoot this during, during the pandemic? Um, luckily, I shot it before. Ah, Actually, before. It, was, it was shot like um, in the middle of. 2019. Ah, there you are. Yeah, it, it was quite a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I think it took a lot of time because we have dubbing as well, and the mm. dubbing process is another story. Like yeah, it's, right, it's, right. Yeah, it's quite another story. Yeah. I think I still have a few more minutes. Um, the use of uh, voice as a metaphor in your yeah, film. Yeah. Um, really hits two birds in one stone. I mean, it could be political for those who, who are changing views from time to time to suit yeah. their personal agenda, or it could be LGBT themed. Yeah, yeah. Is it that case? Uh, would you like to tell us the themes explored in your film? Yeah, um, the why is it? Because like, actually in Thailand, I'm not sure about the other Southeast Asian country, but we have like this dubbing tradition since the end of World War II. Because mm. after World War, like uh, the film producer, the film investor in the country was in like in the, not in a good place. Like we don't have we didn't have enough equipment. So mm. so to cut costs to or to like lessen some budget. So they, they, most of the filmmakers by that time they decided to make film and uh, don't have like a right 
like sound recording at all, and mm -hmm. they fix it in the post. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so we don't. Yeah, and the actors like because it's a uh, in the sixty. It's like a golden year of Thai cinema, and like the very famous actor by that time, they they perform in a lot of films. So maybe in one day they have to be in. They have to shoot film like four films a day, and mm. they didn't have time to memorize the script. So <laughs> they just stand yeah. in front of the camera, <laughs> and some assistant just say the line, and they repeat it, and they, they fix yeah. it. Yeah, and, and they just and fix also, it in dubbing. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's that's another voice actor who do the job, and this and this somehow like accumulate to the point that people also like. Uh, how do you say? It? They are a fan of voice actor as well. Ah, yeah, not just really? the actor, but the voice actor, and yes, somehow they, yes. they have to this pairing. Like, if this actor is on the screen, you have to have the voice of this this voice actor. Right. And like the and the audience by that time, they kind of like expect that the the the, the, the that, that the physical appearance has to align with the interior voice. Like the hero need to sound heroic, something like that. And right. the villain need to sound evil. And and sometimes the actor themselves could not deal with that. So they so the voice actor has to fail in that job. So I like this mm -hmm. idea of like how the outer and inner has to match in dealing the cold war. And how, like, even after the end of the Cold War, some some kind of this idea still like uh, continue in the contemporary mm. time. So, thank you for. While we're at it, we'd like to uh, give uh, cheers to our yeah. uh, voice actors and to you yeah, in yeah. your film. This is a good excuse for me to drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rachapum. I'm going back to you in a while. Yeah. Meanwhile, um, I'd like to present our next guest. Our next guest has a degree in audiovisual communication from the Complutense University of Madrid, screenwriter of short films such as Asbestos, A la Cara, Muero por Volver, Uno or El Vestido, among others, all of them directed by Javier Marco. A la Cara was the winner for best short film at this year's Goya Awards. Among her latest works, he has been a script, she has been a scriptwriter for the feature film Josefina, also directed by Javier Marco, which has just premiered at the San Sebastian Film Festival in the section for new directors. Please help me welcome the scriptwriter of A La Cara, Belen Sanchez Arevalo. Hola, Belen. Hola. Hello. Hello. All Hola right. Um, so this is one film I would love to have everywhere for haters. <laughs> this is one film I would love to have for haters because in, in the film, which I don't want to spoil, uh, one uh, TV host, hostess, goes to the house of uh, a basher. So this is an interesting, interesting conversation happening. They have to watch the film. So one TV host goes to that place. And I think you're talking about social media as a whole. You're putting representation of uh, the characters of people interacting in social media. There's a sense of mystery here because the audiences do not have a clear idea if indeed they know each other prior to meeting. So how are you able to arrive to this script and what is the motivation behind the, the story and the characters? Pues bueno, un poco viene de, de ese odio ¿no? que emanan las redes sociales, que era algo que a mí personalmente y al director de, del corto eh, nos, nos duele bastante. O sea, aunque no se ha dirigido a nosotros, lo hemos visto hacia amigos nuestros o, o hacia personas que no conocemos. Entonces, mmm, nos parecía interesante mostrar cómo era, cómo era, era mucho más difícil decirlo a la cara cuando tienes a la otra persona delante y puedes ver su reacción con tus palabras y lo fácil que es insultar a través de las redes y decir barbaridades sin ver el dolor ¿no? que causa. Entonces, eh, queríamos hacer un encuentro entre dos desconocidos desde hace mucho tiempo y, y, y sumado a este querer mostrar el odio en las redes sociales, pues fue como que se unieron las dos ideas y surgió de ahí el corto, de a la cara. Right. And... It was very, very interesting and well done. Well done by the actors. Um, I would like to move to the next question would be about the actors. No? Tell, tell us how uh, Sonia Almarcha and Manolo Solo, who, who, who were fanta fantastic in the film, tell us that uh, chemistry that they have. If I call it chemistry, but you know, there's really chemistry in, in the way they exchange the banters. Was it fun on the set? Did, what preparations did you do for this? 
with your director, of course. Pues, ellos, bueno, eh, ellos dos son unos actorazos, son unos grandes y además han trabajado juntos antes, ya son amigos. Y bueno, que nos dijeran ah. que sí, fue, fue como un sueño, la verdad, para hacer el corto. Y luego, aparte de Javi, el director, Javier Marco, el, eh, una de las cosas que más le gusta de la dirección es la dirección de actores. O sea, eso para él es fundamental. Eh, se ha formado mucho él en dirección de actores. Yeah. Es para él, no, no es que lo demás, la imagen y el sonido, por supuesto, pero, pero los actores le dan muchísima importancia, ensaya muchísimo con ellos. Y, y bueno, no, como no está aquí lo puedo decir, eh, logra pues muchísima química siempre en, en las interpretaciones. Yeah. Y luego además contar con, con Manolo y Sonia que, bueno, que son dos grandes aquí en España y, y, y es una suerte contar con ellos. Y ya de por sí ellos eh, además se tomaron el personaje súper en serio, lo, lo prepararon, porque son dos actores además súper generosos que trabajan mucho en el mundo del cortometraje, además mm. de hacer largos. Eh, ellos, vamos, eh, siempre están, en, en, todos los años tienen algún corto, apoyan mucho el mundo del corto y es un lujo trabajar con ellos. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Whenever I watch um, their faces, their acting on screen, it seems that when, I, when the camera moves towards them in a close up, you see, you see that they're saying something else, but you see in their eyes that there's more to what they're saying. Like when 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 uh, the character of Manolo would would apologize, you 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 see some sort of well, you were foolish before. You were foolish to say these things, and now that she's in front of you, so say it. It was such an intense scene that I think people should really really watch. I mean, all the films for this for this year's Spanish Film Fest. <laughs> Sí, porque eh, Manolo, bueno, Sonia también, pero Manolo además sabe en los silencios que tiene, eh, esas miradas que hace de refilón, mm. te, te hacen entrar dentro de él, de la angustia sí, vital sí. del personaje por lo que está viviendo en ese momento. No sabes muy bien, eh, o sea, cuando lo dice es como que se produce una catarsis y se da cuenta del dolor que causa eh, verbalizándolo y con la persona delante cuando, cuando mira hacia arriba y ve a Sonia totalmente destrozada, al personaje de Sonia Lina totalmente destrozada y, y la verdad que las miradas es verdad que, que en ellos dos dicen mucho pero eso lo, es como lo que decíamos antes también contar con dos actor, actorazos que sabes que te llenan la pantalla ¿no? que con mm. una sola mirada ya te van a, a decir todo lo que siente el personaje es un lujo la verdad Yes, I, I could really tell that so beautiful. Um, now that hearing it from you is, is really quite different, I mean, especially if you've seen the film. So if you've seen the film and now you're faced with the writer <laughs> telling us all this, it's, it's, it's such a wonderful, wonderful uh, experience for, for, for just anyone. So um, I would like to finally tell, tell us about the director, um, Javier Marco, because you've been collaborating with him uh, in, in his films. And uh, it seems that this is working for you, you know, sí. and getting acclaim and awards and all that. How is the working relationship? Uh, when did you start? Pues, hombre, en nuestro caso es, es curioso porque además nosotros somos, somos pareja también en la vida y entonces pues trabajamos eh, desde ah, casa los dos. O sea, yo normalmente yo estoy en el guión y él está en la dirección, pero nos, nos, eh, nos nutrimos mucho el uno del otro. Entonces él está eh, todo en el proceso de guión y yo también voy con él al rodaje a, a mirar, a ver qué tal. Y, y como sabemos muy bien cómo trabaja el uno con el otro, pues ya... Eh, como que nuestros trabajos van muy orientados ¿no? a, a este pack. Y, y, y Javi pues es un director que, que a mí, bueno, no es porque es el director con el que yo trabajo, pero sí que es verdad que, que le da mucho peso a la historia, es un director que, que no le importa quedar eh, transparente para darle todo el peso a los actores y eso logra, logra luego pues, el resultado que... Que, que siempre, bueno, que hasta el momento ha dado nuestros cortometrajes y en el largo que hemos hecho y, y bueno, es un director que es, yo creo que es un director generoso y, y, y sobre todo le da lo que hablábamos, le da todo el peso a los actores para que ellos eh, se coman al personaje y, y se muevan libremente por, por los planos y, y transmitan todo lo que la historia le pide transmitir, ¿no? Entonces la verdad que, que en ese sentido es un director que 
que yo creo que aporta bastante a la historia también, a, también en dirección, es, siempre deja que el guión esté muy vivo hasta el último momento, incluso en la sala de edición también es, eh, la historia sigue viva, la vamos, la, va, eh, cambiamos escenas de sitio y de todo, o sea, siempre eh, todo abierto ¿no? hasta el final. Así. Well, I also believe that you are a very generous uh, scriptwriter and collaborator. It seems, it seems, based on uh, the way you uh, explain things. Bueno, siempre, siempre vemos vemos la película eh, como que lo que la película vaya pidiendo, ¿no? Entonces hasta hasta la sala de edición, hasta el último momento está abierta, ¿no? A, a todo y, y bueno, desde dejarla abierta hasta el final, todo lo que se vaya incorporando, que veamos que forma que da forma a la película y la película te lo pide, pues la dejamos siempre abierta hasta el final. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm sure you fight a little bit, right? <laughs> On set. <laughs> Sí, sí, sí. Mucho, mucho, mucho. Sí, pero todo queda, todo queda en el trabajo. ¿eh? O sea, sí, 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 pero claro, claro, claro. No, no hay más remedio. ¿eh? Alguna vez le digo, ¿por qué hemos quitado esa frase? O él me dice, no, esa escena no, tal. Y, y yo, yo sufro, ¿no? Porque te quitan del guión. Pero vamos, poquito. Poquito, poquito. <risa> Yeah, well, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to you again, Belen. Uh, gracias. Thank you. Cheers. Our third guest is an independent <laughs> filmmaker born in Masbate and raised in Manila, Philippines. His short film, Nakao 2017, won Best Fiction Film at the third Mini Kino Film Festival in Jakarta, Indonesia. It is uh, also the film competed for the Asiana International Short Film in Seoul, Korea, and was shortlisted for the Short Film Festival in Brussels. His work, Tarang, 2020, was awarded the Berlin Brandenburg Award for Best Short Film at the 36th Interfilm Berlin Short Film Festival in 2020 and was selected for the 16th Prague Shorts Film Festival International Competition. Say hola to the director of Tarang, uh, Arvin Bellarmino. Magandang hapon, Arvin. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon to everyone. <laughs> hello, hello. And so we meet again. Huh? Yes. <laughs> How are you, Direct? What... Uh, I would like to start this question because, you know, your film is perfect for the pandemic. It's, it's a very, very happy film. Oh, my God. <laughs> of course, I'm joking, you know. Um, it's, it's a film about poverty. So what makes this film different from the other poverty films? Uh, and what treatment from your end makes this one really interesting? Well, um, I actually don't have to, like, um, get into what's the difference from on, from other films, but okay. I made I made I made sure yeah I made sure that um, the the problem should be on a foreground but not on a background like the mm -hmm. you know that's actually the important thing when you are you know um, creating films about you know the the situation uh, like this heavy situation which, which is about poverty that they are, you are not using it just for background. Mm. you know to, mm. to just to you know make to, for you for your film to make it good but you have to address the the film the you know the situation or the the, the issue itself as the foreground of the film mm. so and um by navigating them as well for them to you know go outside from that situation you know that's mm. how actually i relay the, the the message on this film and when it comes to the the treatment i actually well, I'm, first and foremost, I'm a big fan of, you know, the, the films from Lino Broca, the, you know, those kind of Right, so these are the realistic yeah, films, up, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. I grew up with them, and it's because of my mom, you know, she she was the one who, you know, um, got me into these kind of uh, films, and, so, you know, so you're, I, it, and, was it your mom bringing you to the cinemas before? Um, actually, my, my mom and dad, but my mom is like a big fan of Broca. Okay. When, okay. When, when, I, when I was in high school, <laughs> go ahead. And gro growing up as well in a, you know, in a marginalized place in, in Manila, I think that's actually give a big impact in, in you know, the subconscious, you know, the, you, you know, what, 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 while I'm creating a short story subconsciously, I'm reflecting the my personal experience, something like mm. that. So it's like a combination of everything in my own, 
uh, you know, existence. <laughs> okay. Like yeah. <laughs> you shot this in Ermita, where I live, actually. And yes, I happened to yes. uh, pass by in one of your shooting days, which I didn't want to disturb you. So I didn't say hello. <laughs> so I can, I can, <laughs> I can really attest. To me. <laughs> no, it's okay. You were busy directing. So I can attest <laughs> to the realism portrayed on screen. But uh, my question would be, what inspires you um, to do this kind of stories? And how do you direct it in such a manner that it looks so real? Because there are many other films that th doesn't really get, get mm -hmm. the actual situation. I think the main factor here was the immersion process that I did with, mm -hmm. with, the, with the people there. That's how I gave respect to the you know to, to to the story itself when i interviewed some of the you know real people who are in this kind of you know real situation mm. and mm. i actually managed to actually stay there for three days you know <laughs> you know i actually like really literally you know s s s but but, but i actually there. got you yeah exactly there? yeah okay. yes exactly with because i'm actually used to it since i mentioned that i actually you know lived in a marginalized place in in Manila. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, what, what did you say? You mentioned that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I mentioned earlier that I used to live to this kind of community. Ah, yeah. yeah. Was, okay. Yeah. You live with we them. Are yeah. Just, yeah. We, we, when we are just new and, you know, to be specific in Capo, we are in a marginalized community. So, um, you know, ha having this kind of immersion is not new to me. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not alienated with this kind of, you know, situation and I'm so, so it's for me as a director, it's just the matter of being responsible to the material itself mm. to make sure that I, I you know, that, that I will be able to relay the main issue of the right. problem, you know, of the situation there, wherein, you know, it's, 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 all, it's all about the, the survival of this family. You know, some, mm. of, I mean, some of the, you know, people who are like, like me, you know, I'm, I'm actually right now in a situation when I know what's what I'm going to eat tomorrow, you know, yeah. you know, some of my friends are already in a privileged, you know, kind of life, but these families they don't know what they are going to do in the next yeah. day. Yeah, you know, they they're not, they're, they're not you know they don't know what they're going to eat next day. So mm -hmm. every day they they have this kind of you know um, a problem that they are carrying. So. It's just a matter of visualizing it, you know, you know, in a responsible way, you know, yeah. consulting it to them as well, you know, because they are the one who's, you know, you know, um, experiencing it in real life. So that, that's how I treated the story. That's how I managed to make it more realistic. I think it's because of, you know, just, you know, fully giving the, the respect to the material. Mm -hmm. Before I, uh, thank you. Before I proceed to the uh, next questions, we'd like to remind again our audience that you can ask questions by clicking the Q&A icon below. Uh, here in our uh, Zoom uh, meeting. And for those who are in Facebook, uh, please ask your questions in the comment section. So um, one of the things that we, people will notice in your film is that the portrayals are very, very uh, realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you have one professional actor uh, in the person of Soleiman Cruz. Yes, but how yes. about the others? Are, are these uh, community theater actors? Are these... Um, Amateurs, how were you able to uh, select them or to do the, your uh, casting process? Actually, some of the some of the actors there are like uh, already have an experience with short films, and some mm -hmm. are totally non actors. And what I did, I actually, you know, um, I actually invited them to immerse with me as well. Some like I think ah, three okay. actors, okay. but 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 for, with, with, you know, with doing overnight, no, not not that to the extent. To the extent of that, um, <laughs> okay. I think three of at uh, three of them, like we stayed for almost twelve hours, you know, talking to them, you mm. know. Uh, mm. So the immersion really helped them to portray or like to feel, you know, to smell what's really in there, you know. And mm. also mm. by watching some of my favorite films that are that are close to that kind of cinema, All right. it also helped us to for them to you know to. To, to, to have this kind of portrayal and to mm. make it more realistic as the, uh, you know, uh, to, while portraying the characters. 
But actually, Soliman Cruz did a great job of you know helping them as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Actually, I'm we sure. had um we had a street reading. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, in their house, if I'm not mistaken, like five days before the the shoot, we had a, a street reading in their house with these Dan actors. So it's like he's giving them he's giving them a like an acting workshop, something like that. So it's really fun. The process was really fun. Uh, well, I'm sure it w- would have been fun if you did script reading on the streets, you know. But of course, yeah. it's kind of impossible because of the noise. No? Yes. <laughs> have I you agree. tried that? <laughs> we should try I that. But uh, yeah, I, I'll consider that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So now the Philippines is in a, another political s- season. Uh, we have been, we're entering a political season, and um, obviously, or maybe I'm wrong, um, your film. Uh, talks about poverty and and how people are trapped in that kind of system. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm sure it mirrors what's happening in real life. And uh, it's a critique of uh, the current government, now, given that the characters are usually victims of a system. Um, I'd like to ask, um, how would you think your film would would be able to, I don't know, convince people how to move forward for change because usually they're they 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 are the ones being uh, voted uh, or they are the ones voting for the politicians and the politicians in return are not caring for their plight well i think uh, as a filmmaker i'll just keep on you know re- raising awareness if there is like a story that affects me mm. as a person mm. because actually that's how mm. i made uh, some of my short films as well. It really came from my personal experience. And the m- message, yeah. as long as it's there, it's still existing, especially here in our country. You know, there's actually like a professor that told me that, are you going to still, you know, you know uh, make poverty films? And I <laughs> actually had a joke like, yeah, as long as we're still in a third world country, why not? You know, <laughs> yeah, well, good point. You know, yeah, good point. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, exactly. True. We are we are not a first world country, so why am yeah. I why am I going to you know so something like that? But actually, but the message is like I will keep on raising questions, but not answers. And um, you know, I'll 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 keep on you know raising awareness about these situations that affect mm-hmm. me as a person. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, I will leave it to the audience on how will they you know act or. How will they get be get moved with the you know with with the with the film? Mm. But for me, it always with, with with these kind of uh, passion projects, uh, especially with this kind of uh, theme or like with this kind of um, cinema that I'm that I'm actually you know um, handling for a couple of years already with this kind of poverty, violence, mm. and mm. Uh, it it always uh, you know it, it is it will always be somehow connected to my personal experience right and right. uh so i will keep on doing that but mm. the mess the i will all but but i but what what i will do is i will make sure that the message will be clear right. to the audience right. and it's up to them on how will they act you know? right Something okay like that, yeah. well thank you thank you very much uh arvin um, I'm happy to see you. Actually, happy to see you <laughs> again. Me too. I, I always love talking to you. With this, you know, very intimate talk about film. I enjoy. Yes. It. Well, thank you. Uh, well, at least now we're speaking in English, or quite yes. strangely, but we need to, right? Okay. So yes. I like this. Okay. Um, I'm, let me go back to all the other filmmaker guests, and before I go mm-hmm. to uh, Rachapum, uh, Belen, and Arvin again, because we have a question from our audience. Uh, please continue giving us your questions through uh, the Q&A button below uh, the Zoom. And for those in Facebook, you can actually ask the questions in the comment section. So we have a question. I'll go first with Ratchapum. What do you like about making short films versus making feature films? Here we go. (laughs) I think it's uh, because now I'm in the process of developing my first feature. Yes. I felt like this the task is really tremendous comparing to short film. <laughs> like um, it's it's very really difficult and and I don't know. I felt like in short film it's very flexible and you could try many things. Like short film is very very how to say like very elastic, very flexible form. You could make yes. anything in short yes. film except True. being long. 
and in, yeah. in the future, <laughs> you have many concern in the future, like yes. and that if, if that's possible, is that gonna like mm, something like that? But still, I feel like future is still a challenge that that I also yeah, like to accomplish in one in a day. So yeah. But your but your film yeah. um, felt like it was a feature, no? <laughs> yeah, I think it's weird. I'm sure that's not the first comment you've heard, no? Yeah, yeah. I, I think in Thailand it's kind of weird because I'm, I'm not sure about the other, but but it's like um, in film school in Thailand normally like yeah we teach, but I also teach film and mm. we always I, I as a teacher I always like show feature film in in class, but when you give an assignment you ask the student to make a short film, yeah, and it somehow result that. Many short film from film students in Thailand, they felt like they have like a feature film hissing, but short. Yes. Yes. So it, it's so it's kind of weird. At, at, at one time, I feel like maybe it's a kind of characteristic of Thai short film, but on the other hand, I feel like it's kind of how to say a disadvantage of the film because it's make a film a little bit slow and I don't know, yeah. really too slow. You know? Yeah, yeah, but not yeah. really too slow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can I, I can still name ten uh, slower than yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. My film is kind of like feel like feature in a way, like just the structure of it, the setup, the middle, the ending. Mm. Feel like oh, it's it's like a feature. Yeah. Yeah. Like we have shot. a question from Rio for you, Rachapum. Um, okay. Your short film looks like it could be a feature film. Are you planning to jump into feature films? I think you've answered this because you're coming up with a new one. So the, I, yeah, I would like yeah. to ask the question: What is your new film all about? <laughs> uh, it's about the course and also like political as well. It's about it's called a useful course. Yeah, a, a ghost. Uh, yeah, a useful Yo. course. Yeah, ghost course. Interesting. Yeah, it's about a, a woman who died already, but she she's she's worried about her son because her son has this allergic and keep coughing in the house because of the dust in the house. So she oh my god <laughs> to haunt the vacuum cleaner to clean the house. Oh, uh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, she's trying to be useful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, not not good when you cough in the house these days because you know anybody who coughs, you know, uh, people are, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Rachapum. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'll go back to you in a while. Uh, I have a question okay. for Belen. Uh, para Belen, uh, guionista de Alacara. What's your next mm -hmm. project? Pues justo, bueno, es el cortometraje de, de A la Cara, lo, durante el confinamiento que vivimos, el director y yo, para no matarnos también en 30 metros cuadrados que vivimos, pues nos pusimos y desarrollamos el, en, entre los dos esta vez el largometraje guión y, y ya lo tenemos escrito y estábamos ya moviéndolo para levantarlo mm. y luego otro guión ya de largometraje, o sea que bueno, y, y seguro que, que en medio, como cuesta tanto levantar, mm. levantar un largo, pues en medio haremos corto seguro, tenemos ya un guioncito de un corto, así que también haremos otro. <ríe> sí. aren't, aren't that so sweet? <laughs> Bueno. Sí, bueno, dijimos, a ver, yo siempre me voy a buscar yeah. un director y así. Ah, ok. So, I've noticed, I have a question for you, because I've noticed that there isn't much conversational pieces in cinema these days. Not compared to uh, early 90s and early 2000s, there's really lots of them, especially in Europe. There's several kind of these uh, before. So, um, do you think as a writer, this approach to storytelling needs more audiences or, or vice versa? Um, te refieres a, a hacer dos personas hablando, ¿no? Con diálogos entre ellos, eh, una conversación entre dos historias. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yes, correct. That's, that's right. Because um, to present, the short film presents the situation in, in a very short moment, like it's a fragment of the, of the day. So um, those mm -hmm. kind of situations or in short films are quite rare these days because everybody seems to have this burden to finish the film. <laughs> but, but that situational films are quite rare, the only this situation, just to present them a, a part of the day, to give them some sense of mystery or some sense of uh, conversation after they watch the film.
Sí, lo, bueno, lo, justo lo que, lo que queríamos en el corto era mostrar con una conversación toda la historia que esconde detrás ¿no? la película. Y eso es algo que para, para corto a nosotros nos funciona muy bien, que es encontrar un momento, de su, lo que, como has comentado, un momento de sus vidas, un momento de un día que te, que te condense una historia detrás. ¿no? Entonces, a la, y en la hora, a la hora del largo creo que los espectadores... Eh, condensar un encuentro en la película, nos gusta también mucho jugar con los silencios, pero también eh, ahondar de repente que te suelten todo lo que llevan dentro en, con, con una conversación larga también nos gusta y, y bueno creemos que sí que hay eh, espectadores que, que esto lo que es un tipo de cine que sí que les llega ¿no? eh, sí que nos gusta también por ejemplo en el largo que hemos hecho con A la Cara, lo hemos combinado con, con mucho silencio también. Solamente en algunas, en algunas partes vuelven a estas, a estas conversaciones y es cuando se dejan como fluir, ¿no? De extrañas un poco los personajes. Pero bueno, esperemos que sí que tenga público. <ríe> sí. Yeah. Yeah, also very interesting because um, these days everybody seems to want to talk and silence is not much given attention. And I think that in silence we have this... Uh, uh way to listen to each other because the social media is too loud it's too too complicated and complex and really full of hate you know, trying to divide people i think the silences in cinema could also redirect us as, as audiences Sí, sí, el silencio, bueno, en, la, en el largo que hemos hecho nosotros ahora prácticamente no hay diálogo, o sea, jugamos un poco con las dos cosas y, y sí, de hecho, bueno, mm. desconectar a veces de las redes sociales, yo por ejemplo que me he quitado de, de Twitter, lo que pasa que también son muy útiles a la hora de trabajar, ¿no? pero ese silencio mm. que te provoca desconectar de ellas es muy terapéutico y, y volcarlo también en el cine, volcarlo en una película, pues también... Pues, yes, es interesante, yes, ¿no? Yes. <laughs> sí. that's, that's so true. Silence is therapeutic. I like that. Yeah, true. So true. Um, thank you. Gracias, Belén. Um, going to Arvin. We have a question here from uh, uh, Señor Javier, ¿no? How was the reaction of the community you were filmed within? Have uh, you in mind to extend Tarang to a long version? <laughs> Well, um, well, actually, some of them are uh, actually, you know, uh, in, in a different place now. Like, uh, in a, in they get, get got back to the province, mm. and but some some few like I actually showed the finished film to them, and they are really happy, and they actually they actually have the same thought of you know making it longer, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, but yeah, I'm actually quite moving on with. You know, focusing on my feature right now, which is mm. really, really about you know the com like the community about me as a musician with right. my feature film, mm. and actually Racha Poon is my classmate, uh, classmate in talent. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Hui, <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> hui. Ah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, um. Well, yeah. I think I'll leave. Uh, I'll leave that film and that note. You know, <laughs> um, but okay. I think I it's, mean, strong budget aside. it's strong enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, I think I'm very satisfied. Me and Patsy, my, my producer, um, we are so right. very, very satisfied with what happened with Tarang. And, hmm. uh, and I'm confident to say that it's really a strong film uh, when it comes to, you know, the message that I want to relay to the audience. So it will stay that. It will stay like Uh, you know, a painful film <laughs> like that. So yeah, I, I think yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna like think of extending it to answer the question. But right now, I'm really excited with my first feature film. So I could tell you. You just released <laughs> a still in your in your page. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting that that image. So anyway, good luck to that. Um, mm -hmm. Let me go back to uh, Hui. No, Rachapum, <laughs> your classmate. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You, could, you, you could have told me that uh, first time because uh, what? So I always have this fascination for for your names in Thailand. It's quite I, uh, long, but your nicknames yeah. are only one syllable. So see, very interesting. Because it's more practical. Normally, people use nicknames. The, right. The, the, the real name is only for like official. Yeah, no true. one used real name. You don't call your friend with real name. It's true. Absurd. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. 
so if you have one syllable in Thailand, in Philippines we double the syllable like Jun Jun or Toto or yeah. <laughs> Nick Nick. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I have a question for you before I proceed to the last questions for the rest. Have you seen the films in in película? Have you seen anyone? Actually, I just saw the the short films program, mm -hmm. and if, I haven't haven't have a chance to watch Vijay yet. But I I try to catch one or two. All right. Yeah, um, okay. I don't want to put you in that situation, but but yeah, let yeah. me just ask this question: If you have uh, a film that you think uh, would counter your your own film uh, that you have seen during the pandemic is there is there any film that you know you see that would um, be either counter program side by side your film or uh, it's a good uh, extension or is a good uh, critique of your film what would that be have you seen any this uh, pandemic that's a tough question <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i never imagined that like counter my film because you know some some short films when you watch when you watch it, then you, it reminds you of another film or it reminds you now oh, this is a good critique to my to my work or this is an interesting film that should screen side by side my work. Actually, that's like an old type film. That, mm. um, um, it's called Iron Pussy. It's also about this transgender <laughs> superhero as well. But <laughs> yeah. I I didn't think of that before because actually it's quite interesting. It's uh, the Iron Pussy was like a um, in the daytime, he's a Salali man, but in the night, he he changed his dress and become like a transgender man to see that fight for the prostitute. Yeah, yeah interesting. And, and, and the artist, like he's a filmmaker artist, like Michael Chawanasai, he made uh, three short films about that. And he also developed a feature with Abhishek Ho. And oh. yeah, so actually they co-directed, but it's a film that people tend to forget about it. <laughs> in the Abhishek Pong <laughs> filmography because it's totally different. Actually, he, he made it after Tropical Malady, between mm. Tropical Malady and mm. the Syndrome yeah. of Century. Yeah. It's a feature called The Adventure of Iron to See. Um, mm. Actually, my film got compared to that a little bit, but I, I didn't think of that film when I, when I was making this great I didn't see. Yeah, maybe it could have like a conversation in You're a right. way. Yeah, right. yeah, I think so. Okay, oh, fair enough. In the Philippines, we have a hero called Jaja Jaturna. It's also uh, <laughs> oh, very uh, funny. Yeah, it's <laughs> very funny. It's very funny. It's a very funny book and a very funny uh, theater play. I hope it's going to be made into a film. Thank you, uh, Hui. Uh, I'm going to go to Belen. Belen, um, wanted to ask you about uh, any film that you have seen lately that uh, you feel. Um, could be a, a companion piece to your uh, short film, La Cara. Pues, <laughs> pues sí, es difícil con la, la pregunta. Pues, reciente. Ah, really? Okay. Hombre, yo creo que actualmente las redes sociales... Oh, yeah, any, any film you've seen or probably, or, or an old film. Yeah, an old film that, you know, that you could you put side by side your film and see, hmm, interesting. I'm trying to bridge um, pues, cineasts to to see what are your favorites and what and what are your recommendations for this yeah. uh, during the pandemic or films you've seen probably. For example, una película que yo siempre tenía de referente también por por la soledad, sobre todo no para el corto sino para el largo que va que que va a salir del corto es Corazón Gigante Fusi. Mm. No, sé, eh, no sé la traducción. Ah. Eh, que es, que es una, también un personaje muy solitario, que vive con su madre y es una película muy de silencios esa, porque el largometraje del corto va a ser muy, muy, muy cargado de silencios, aparte de, de esta conversación ¿no? que sale de la entraña. Y mm -hmm. esa, esa es la que para mí podría ser un right. puente, con esta, aunque, aunque no tenga nada que ver con las redes sociales, mm -hmm. ¿no? pero sí con el personaje que vive aislado y, y en un mundo diferente a él, ¿no? Lo que pasa es que no sé la traducción. Guess, en yeah, yeah. Gigante, Fusi, no sé, no sé cómo, cómo deciros el nombre en, en inglés. <laughs> uh, juicy Giant. <laughs> okay, well, 
let's just put it that way. I think it sounds nice. Juicy giant. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, we need to uh, wrap up. Um, I have, thank you, Belen. I have a, a last, not question for Arvin, but it's a reaction from uh, Senor Galvan. Ar Arvin, uh, Senor Galvan volunteers to act as a foreigner who buys flowers to the young vendor in your film. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> yeah, interesting, interesting. Well, thank you. Um, be before I'm, we're going to leave you, I'd like to uh, uh, get our uh, messages from our three filmmakers. I'll start with you probably, Arvin. Yes. Uh, can we invite our viewers to, uh, to watch your film and uh, your parting messages? Ah, yes, uh, please continue to watch our films and uh, Manila Spanish Film Festival 2021. And uh, we're so honored and blessed to be part of the program. Thank you so much. And, yeah. Yes, and uh, yeah, in these times of, you know, in these trying times here you know, during the pandemic, cinema is saving, saving us all, you know, when it comes to the entertainment and giving hope to continue to exist here in this world, you know. Yeah. So I'm really happy. I'm really happy that, you know, uh, to you know, to have this opportunity to show my films and mm. uh, to mm. help in a way using art. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I wish you good luck in your film. It's really nice to see you uh, well alive, kicking, and healthy. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank so you, much. Arvind. And now we go to Bilen. Bilen, your parting words to our uh, viewers. Well. Bueno, muy agradecida primero por, bueno, por conoceros, por esta charla tan estupenda que hemos tenido y por contar con nuestro cortometraje. Eh, es, es genial saber que, nuestro, que el trabajo de una punta del mundo puede llegar a, a cualquier punta del mundo y, y que se vea que es para lo que al final hacemos las películas, que pueda llegar al público. Sí, sí. Así que estamos súper felices de que se haya podido ver el corto. Y, y nada, pues muy agradecida y esperamos estar muchos, muchos años más con vosotros <ríe> y a ver mucho cine. Gracias. Thank you, Belén. Uh, really nice to meet all of you here. Um, how, it's a wonder how all this online technology is bringing us together and uh, making our worlds a little bit uh, smaller so we could know each other and, you know, uh, you know, try to say hello to each other from time to time. So finally, uh, what a pleasure to meet you, Belen, and please extend my regards to your uh, sweet partner, <laughs> the director. Gracias. Thank you. Okay, and now... Um... Yes, please. Thank you very much. I'm sure he can join us the next time. And of course, uh, our friend from Thailand, uh, Rachap Boom, we, uh, your parting messages. Yeah. Um, so, uh, first, I'd like to thank for like having the film screen here and also like this chance to be in the position with you all. And I think like um, I'm always happy when new audience watch my film. And I if you have a chance to watch it, watch it now. <laughs> and also like there are also more, also like a lot of other interesting films also in the program that I myself gonna catch it as well. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's really nice to meet you and I'm sure I'm going to meet all these fabulous filmmakers someday. It's an honor to meet you all. I really have to thank uh, Jose and Instituto Cervantes for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Um, everybody knows I love films. And the films I've watched four times because it's really, really, really lovely. And I'm not joking. You need to watch the four films, if possible, one night. Because it's such a diverse program. It will really, really wake you up in the middle of the night. So um, let me just remind everyone that you can still go to the festival's page, www.pelicula, that's P-E-L-I-K-U-L-A, dot es all the movies uh, are subtitled and are for free we're inviting the audience to see the movies of today thursday oscuro y los sientes on demand today and tomorrow uh 15 horas on demand today and tomorrow Annie on demand today from 6 p.m until tomorrow so that's it for today thank you to all our guests and you our audiences 
until we meet again online or in the cinemas thank you maraming salamat uh, terima kasih kokup kan and muchas gracias maraming maraming salamat have a good day hola welcome to película 2021 Enjoy online and for free some of the best contemporary films from Spain and Latin America at www.pelicola.es. Pelicola 2021 is an initiative of Instituto Cervantes in Manila and Sydney, the embassies of Spain in the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, and Australia, and the AECID in collaboration with the ICAA, the Embassy of Mexico in the Philippines, the National Film Archive of Thailand, the Sydney Film Festival, the Traveling Film Fest Australia, the Film Development Council of the Philippines, the UP Film Institute, the University of the Philippines, and Intramuros Administration.